in this industry is huge. Yeah. Right? Challenge too. Yeah. Woo! here last year on a very different, um, I just had the baby, so I feel like I was here, but I wasn't really here. I was just thinking about, oh my God, I left the baby. I was crying when I left home, and I was really hormonal, and I had a great time, but I'm happy to be back this year, and you know, I can be here with all of you that took the time. I know that you work so hard. You have so many goals, and, and you care about others, and, and that's what I love about being able to connect with all of your coaches. Um, and obviously, yeah, I'm here to create healer programs and help you guys guide your groups with any questions. And, and that's something that we're gonna start later on. But but I just wanna connect, like just me. Forget about that I'm a super trainer, just evaluate the mom, the women, the person who also has to lose weight, who has legit health complications. Some of you know my story, others don't. Um, and, and just tell you that, you know, it is possible, but it's not easy. And, and, and it's, like you said, it's not progress, it's not linear. Um, and I feel like if anything you do it in mind, if you have that mindset, oh, I'm just gonna do it and it's gonna be like that and we're not gonna have setbacks, that's not how it works. I feel like I am one of those drivers that get lost all the time, even with the GPS, and that's happened to me often these past weeks. And I've learned to be patient because like, you know what, it reroutes. And I feel like that's life. You just have to keep pressing forward. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but you're still gonna make your destination as long as you do your best. And anyways. So I have some amazing questions for you. So Idalis, we know that you're a high achiever. We watch you on Instagram and we think you're such a badass and a high performer. But we, all, we usually tend to believe that high achievers and high performers have it all together and that they have all their New Year's resolutions in place. And so, what, what do you have to say about that? Uh, well, first of all, I think like people when I'm, since I'm a little girl, I've always been about setting goals. I don't do New Year's resolutions, by the way, but every month, every other three months, how I live my life, I set time aside, which I haven't done because I've been really busy and that's something that I'm pretty sure there's so many of you that feel, oh, I haven't set any intention for the year, you've been busy or you have it in mind. So how I do it, and I think like people that are successful in different areas, and success is different for everyone, I'm not talking about money, I'm not talking about other things, like every month, every other three months, I kind of like an analyze, I'm honest with myself, and I make sure that the habits and whatever I'm doing in my life is taking me closer to the person that I want to be. And I think that's something that you don't have to wait for the new year, like you can do this week, you can do next month, and, and that's why I don't set New Year's resolution because I feel like I put too much pressure right on this part, but I live my whole year like that. Like I'm always thinking, how can I be a better wife? How can I be a better mom? How can I improve my personal relationships with my family, with my friends? How can I be a better trainer? And, and from there, every month, like I try that my daily habits are in alignment with my values and with the women that I want to become because this is a long process. And yeah, so. I agree. So who else, who else hasn't set their New Year's? Your, your intention for the new year. Who has it? Let's be honest, guys. So we wanted to ask you guys that question because we want to make sure that you guys leave here knowing that it's okay. Like, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have everything all planned out in this Excel spreadsheet with everything you're going to accomplish. We just want you that by the end of this event, you go outside, we have a board where we want you to write a word that is going to trigger you to have the intention that Idalis just shared. Like, what can you say to yourself every single day when you want to set those daily and monthly and weekly goals like Inali just shared. All right, can you guys do that? Can you guys yeah. all do that? And take a picture, Ooh. take a picture. We really want you to you know, make a movement with that because we think it's very powerful and it works. Yeah. Hashtag. 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 NYC Super Weekend, please. Yes, yeah, so we can find it. Okay, so we've heard you say that physical movement heals um, what do you mean by that? I always see you share that on Instagram, that physical movement heals. Um, so when it comes to fitness, like people just, um, for some reason, in society, we think as fitness, like just to lose weight, to look a certain way. And in my life, movement heals. Um, when I was a little girl, movement empowered me. I come from a very dysfunctional home. I grew up with my dad. I was a kid that by the time I was 12, <coughs> I was not living with a family, I was living in a school until I was 18, that you live in that school. 
And so for me, movement was empowering by then. Then it became a sport, it became kind of like my job. But it, one, once I lost my health, uh, for those of you that don't know my story, when I was pregnant the second time, I had a small brain bleed. And that literally changed my life, the life of my family. Um, I really, really thought that was, and that's just something that I can talk now. At the beginning, I used to cry, remember? Um, I really thought that I was gonna die, period. And I leave, like, off, I would say, like, a good six months after that, that I was afraid to even go to sleep at night because there's certain things in life that we cannot control. So my health deteriorated so much. And um, prior to that, I had a bad neck injury, and that's when I had to retire from track. So a lot of times we think, oh, I have an injury then I cannot move. I'm not gonna stop doing all these things. And what happened was my body just got weaker. I got, and it got to the point that throughout that process, I look in the mirror, my, my, my day to day, I couldn't even recognize who I was. I was, I didn't only become weaker on the outside. I was living in this negative mindset, focusing on all the things that I cannot do. And it wasn't until I started seeing movement for what it truly is, movement heals. Like, how many of you have ever, ever saw, have a C-section? I had three C-sections. What is the first thing that I hate that they do that, that they tell you to do a few hours later? You need to get off the bed and walk. And that is one of the hardest things to do. Why? Because by you moving, you're gonna start the healing process. And I want you guys to understand, for me, movement heals. It has helped me um, um, conquer depression through that period of my life conquer a crazy anxiety that I got after going through all those crazy health problems. And, and, and it, helped me, um, it helped me find my purpose and it helped me be um, strong again. Not just to look, because people always look at me and I, and I like the compliments, don't get me wrong, but I wanna be completely honest and say, and I am not full of it, I do not exercise to look a particular, to have a particular look anymore. And if you ever met my husband, my friends, they can tell you, I genuinely exercise because the woman that I wanna be, I wanna be strong, I wanna be feel like the athlete that I was growing up, and I wanna be the version that I wanna be, it requires for me to move. If I wanna create great programs, I wanna lift the part. So when I'm creating those programs, um, I have to film three, four workouts a day. How can I do that if I am not at my best? How can I ask you guys, give me 20 minutes of your best if I am not doing? So that is the reason. And to me, movement heals. So whatever you have, whatever you have, bad pain, if you have neck, move your body. There's always things that we can do to get stronger, to get better. I am a person who has had so many back issues. I've learned if I strengthen my glutes, my back is gonna hurt less because that muscle is supporting my back. So just kind of like get rid of the mindset and see movement and fitness of what it truly is, which is a tool to empower us, to help us connect. So one thing that I want you guys this year as coach to empower women to know when you exercise, forget about how many calories you're burning, forget about that you wanna burn the piece of bread, the empanada, the donut that you have. No, move from a place of love and gratitude because imagine, Imagine that you can take away your ability to walk, to be sick, and you know if you're a mom, if you're a business witness, there's nothing more humbling than being sick because you just get frustrated. So, and just go to that place of gratitude of everything that your body allows you to do and, and just start doing more and, and, and empower your life instead of wanting to be less, or oh, I just want it to be like this because this is gonna be happy because I'm gonna be skinny. No, be more, do more because you are, and I don't use this word, but for some reason I feel it because a bad, how can I say bad? Badass. But like a cute version of that? <laughs> Rockstar. Yeah, Rockstar. like you're like so much more than, than, than how you look. We are so much more than that. And so, so and there's, when you go show up every day because, oh, I hate this little thing. I, have, I hate my cell life. How are you empowering your life if you're exercising just because you genuinely don't like? That's gonna come, the changes are gonna come, but if you need to, it honestly has to come from a place of love and wanting to connect and listen to your body and doing it in a, just in a place of gratitude. I know that sounds like yes for some people, but for me, it's what it works because I used to be super hard on myself. I used to do things another way and I wasn't empowering my life. I never felt like it, was, it wasn't good enough because when we just place those shallow, and it's not shallow, but just, I said it's cold. There's always gonna be 
something that you can do. Like, you know, and, and that's like, movement heals is so much more than losing the weight. I love that and, you know, it helped me in my beach body business because I suffered a, a very bad car accident in 2016. And you seeing that and then knowing that some of my coaches have suffered some really severe back issues and neck issues, yeah. it has helped me to be able to empower them to keep going and to do things that they can do because we have a library of so many different workouts that there is always something that you can do. Thank you, Nalis, for sharing so wholeheartedly. And so one of the things I wanted to ask you, this is kind of like my personal question. Um, do you ever feel like you don't want to work out? Like, you know? Never. <laughs> and first of all, like the technical days, and there was the only days that I'm like, I would do hurdles and long jump, that was, but I don't have any memories of me being, oh, yes, I want to go for a run, I want to go live. No, it's just, again, I feel like these habits, um, there's no such, good, such thing as good and bad habits, because even sometimes bad habits can serve you for a period of your life. There's efficient habits. So when it comes to, exercising and training for me and make it sustainable and make it fun and make it smart and again it has to be in alignment with my identity and i feel like that's why so many people you have this story of yourself oh i never exercise this is not who i am so your habits and then the habits that the way you live your life you're just kind of attached to that identity but you need to think is the person that i want to become is a healthy person choose to use the stairs or go in an elevator, like little things like that because it's all about the small details, all the small steps. I don't believe, every time I try to do it like crazy hard, I always crash and fail. So that's why my approach has changed throughout the years, have evolved. But yes, motivation is overrated. Overrated. There's, of course, once in a while, you see certain things that motivates you and it's good that you kind of have those in your side so that you have a vision and, and it reminds you, but it's so much more than that. It is, I never, honestly, I never, never, never want to exercise. I still have those thoughts that I'm like, why should I be doing it? I can't, because I never watched uh, TV, and I'm like, ooh, it would be nice to just sit down and things like that, but, you know, you I just got to do it. I love your honesty, because I think a lot of women in general can relate, especially if you have a newborn baby, oh, you know, the, the baby wakes up. I do exercise. Sometimes I get messages about women, I cannot wait to start to the baby, and I'm like, really? Yeah, I never felt like that. I was just doing it because I know, like this time around, I felt like I was afraid to get like PPD and things like that. I'm like, okay, I know if I add movement, I'm gonna feel a little bit better. I'm gonna have more energy, and it's just gonna take me one step closer to the direction that I wanna go. But there was no, even now, like my baby's always interrupting my workouts, and so, yes. But it's, it's so genuine, and as coaches, I think that's something that can make us so relatable, because I think most people have no time, they have all these mind blocks and stuff like that. And so thank you for being so honest, I love that about you. And so another big thing that's been coming up in our network is hormones. And so I wanted to ask you, does exercising increase or de decrease the stress hormone depending on the type of exercise that you choose? So exercising, it is a stress in the body. That's why it is so important that your muscles sleep good, that you listen to your body, that you're eating properly. Um, if you have a very, very stressful day and you did not sleep good, I will never tell you go do a high intensity workout. Go do a crazy lifting section because literally all you're doing is getting cortisol, cortisol to your body. So you're just gonna accumulate fat. You're not gonna feel good. So we need to work with our bodies and not against it. And, and, and exercise in a smart way. So you need, it, but at the same time, exercise is one of the best things, especially strength training, um, to regulate your hormones, especially women, to have that. But we cannot just emphasize on the exercise. It's, it's a combination. You need to manage your stress. You need to sleep good and you need to eat better. Then you're gonna get the most out of your fitness. And that is when you get that better balance in your hormonal and you get to see results because especially for women um, our hormones control everything yeah it is that <laughs> so.
Thank you so much. I mean, I already know what I'm going to be talking about all week just with this Q&A, but I did want to open it up to you guys. We're going to take, how many, Mickey, do we have time for 10? We do? Okay, so I want 10 bold badasses. She said that word. She said the word badass. Um, badasses to come up here and take the mic and ask a question. Come on, get up. Come on, guys. Don't make me pick up. <laughs> Come on, Cruz, you're gonna break the ice? So I, I know, I get, I know you guys have a big responsibility as coaches to connect with women. And I know you get a lot of different questions. So and even if it's Thank for you. you, don't be ashamed. There's nothing that you're gonna ask me um, that I haven't heard. I feel like sometimes as women we shy away and even men from talking about things that you feel, you know, after the postpartum and your pelvic area, all these things. So I think, you know, anyway, don't ask me. Don't, don't be shy. Cruz, let's get some more people. Make believe you're on Gary Vee. You guys never got to see Gary Vee? He gets like freaking <laughs> 10 lines of people asking questions. We need more people. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> My name is Miriam, and I'm ready to bring up hormones. I am 51 years old. So I know I'm going through my changes. So I don't, I know I don't sleep well. So how can I, how can I learn? I know I have to learn my body, but my question is how can I start to learn to teach my body? You, you follow me? To teach your body. Yeah, how, how, how can I learn about my hormones? Do I have to go to the doctor and get a test? You should, I feel like every woman, after any nowadays, should at least once a year get a whole panel of thyroid, everything. Even me, a few years ago, uh, I was having problems sleeping and I felt restless and I'm like, what's happening? Like, I feel like I'm doing everything. And then there were some, there was a few things that were off. So this is very important. And one thing that I said this a lot on some of the calls that I've done with Carlos, our hormones get affected for everything, the food that we eat, the environment, the products that we use. So sadly, we kind of have the us. Like even the makeup that we use. That's one of the. I've been very more mindful about the products that I apply. Maybe the makeup that I use is not as lasting and things like that. But there's so much more than that. So I feel like you should definitely get a panel so that you can part from that. That's going to be your base. But if you have problems with sleep, sit down and analyze your day. What are you doing? Do you are a person? Do you take your phone to your room? Do you, when is the last time that you see the screen, TV? Um, do you have a nighttime ritual? All those things are so important because that has, that's always been my worst habit, sleep. So you have to, we have to be honest with yourself and we need to take action. Um, whatever is like meditating. For me, meditation comes in the form of prayer, spending time alone with God, um, finding moments of gratitude. I never, that's why I'm so bad sometimes answering to message on Instagram. After 8 p.m., I put my phone to charge on the kitchen. So if I'm snacking or something, I go and check, but I don't take it to my room. My family and my my close ones to me know that they can call either my cell phone, my husband's cell phone, or my house phone if there's an emergency. So there's certain things that you can start doing to improve your sleep. Um, some women exercise after 7, 8 p.m. That's actually, that is bad. That's going again, your internal cycle. Um, one thing that is really very helpful, getting the morning sunshine because it's kind of, you're telling your body, um, okay, it's bright. So if you can have like three minutes, whether you're doing your cup of coffee, you're energized in the morning, in the sunshine, do that in the morning. And then change it up and start maybe exercising in the middle of the day, three to 4 p.m. because that might be the reason why you're not sleeping. So there's, and there's education. Like start reading the book. There's so many amazing doctors and professionals that also have a holistic approach. There's so much knowledge and information out there. So because at the end of the day, you are, you're actually the expert in your own body. Yes. You know best. You know. So you just kind of have to like be honest with yourself. Start writing down your habits. Go to your doctor first. Do a whole panel. Everything. You'll be surprised. So many people do they haven't done it in five years. You want to know what's going on in your body so that you can take. I, for some reason, and I live in Florida, I am always vitamin D3 deficient. And I'm like, right what now. is that about? I so, and then you start taking your supplement. I was vitamin C deficient. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I eat so healthy. So, there's certain things that our bodies, you never know what's going on, that you kind of have to, again, work with it and not against it. And we're not going to be able to make those wise decisions if we're not informed. 
and if we don't take action. So, but for now, for the little bit of talk, disconnect, have a nighttime ritual, whether it's a reading, having a moment of gratitude, get off <laughs> social media. I know you guys, this is your business, but it's so bad. I see people connected all the time. We're not meant as humans to be connected 24 seven. That is so unhealthy and it's gonna block your creativity. It's not really gonna help you truly connect. You get drained. I feel drained whenever I spend a few days kind of like intentionally in social media. We're all different, it affects me. Um, but anyway, so. I hope you have another. Thank you. So we have another. Thank you so much for your question. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Amalia. My name is Amalia. Okay. So my question is, do you meal prep for you and your family? And how do you do that? So I haven't in a while. <laughs> and every single week I am, why haven't I meal prep? Because this is it's hard. It is so hard. So I am going to keep it real. These past two weeks, I have to have ordered Uber Eats at least once a week. But, but, but I order healthier things. But when I do, life is so much easier. So when I do it, I do it every three days. But I still, you always have to do something kind of like in between. But because my daughter has always take lunch with us. So what I do, regardless every day when I cook, I cook a lot. And sometimes I do two different meals. Because then everybody, minus my husband, they always take lunch with them. So, but definitely it is one thing that I need to be more, but I, it's been, you guys are gonna understand soon why my life has been extremely busy lately, and I'm also in the process of moving, but please meal prep, because that is the one thing that at least on a Wednesday, I'm like, oh my God, I wish I would have not done that on Sunday, and I would have taken the time, because it does make your life easier. I just wanna share a trick that, like, sometimes the word meal prep stresses us out, so I don't use it, I just cook, enough for the next day yeah, every day. I always cook enough and that's meal people. prepping and I always do dishes like you said like a I big do, like, you know, yes, I you know. Always, that's something that I do and we always have one thing that we always have is a lot of fruits and vegetables available and like potatoes like purple potatoes little things that are easy to make too pasta like I don't complicate it once in a while we will try to do something fancy but I just kind of like do my favorite food that my family likes and I just have like four dishes that we do and then and they're really easy to make. I like making your Oh, the best they want? Hi, I'm Meg. Hi, Meg. Thank you for your time. Um, so one of my questions was, I'm recently starting out as a new coach, and I know I could be a huge cheerleader for other people, but find that hard to do with myself with yeah. building a business. So I guess, what would be your piece of advice to be that badass in a cute way cheerleader for yourself? <laughs> I think the fact that you're studying now, first of all, I think we can all relate to that. It's so much yeah. easier to be there for other people than for us. Um, one of the things that helped me, and I don't know you, um, my, when growing up, I never heard anything positive and things like that. So my mindset was something that I really started to have to work years ago when I started in the industry. It seemed impossible, a lot of the things that I've done, but obviously you believe in yourself if you haven't taken the first step. So affirmations and and just keep doing action. But you have to kind of like condition your mind to believe it and start saying it aloud. And it's always gonna feel cheesy at the beginning, but you truly have to feel it and surround yourself with the people that believe in you and see that in you. If you don't have those, I'm sorry, they're very hard to find, by the way. Um, but for me, honestly, it was that. Just a lot of book of self-development and, and and it was a process, it was kind of like work. It, it, it didn't come easy to start believing in myself and, and to be my biggest cheerleader, but there's just no way around it. Uh, a few years ago, I'm like, if I am not behind everything, if I am not my biggest believer, who's gonna believe me? So you literally, it's like, kind of like how you have to brush your teeth and eat your vegetable, is something that every, we need to work on it, but it doesn't come natural, so. Did you might have I can give you some, well, some very related to what you're saying. But the fact that one of our vital behaviors is to cheer on others, right? That could be a huge strength for you. So if you look at it as a strength, you can use it to build your business. Because even if it's the people in your home, if you're impacting them and you're making them food and they're having results and they're encouraging you and helping you out, you talk about those things and that's the business opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Thank you so much. But congratulations. Right. Thank so you. Yeah. Come yeah. For two more. One more, right? Just one more. Oh maybe. Oh, oh, sorry, guys. You guys got too shy. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. One more? How much time do we have? 
Fire. We do it fast. Okay. We'll do rapid fire. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Which means only like yeah, yeah, rapid fire. We fast. Hi, my name is Christina. Um, you talked about setbacks in your life. So I wanted to know, how can I get myself more motivated even after several setbacks I've been enduring? I'm trying to go to that place when I have so many setbacks. I don't think you have the motivation. I think you have to make a decision whether you keep pressing forward and use that as a lesson because they are lessons. And in my case, uh, I am a woman of faith. Uh, I had to go to the place of believing. The plans that God has for me are better than anything. Trust his timing and stay consistent, believing and doing what I need to do because sometimes um, when I look back at those things that I thought were my setbacks, I wasn't ready or I still have a lot to grow. I still have so much to learn before I did it, but it is freaking hard when you're in the midst of those setbacks, whatever they are, because for me, they have come in so many different places. And all I can tell you is to not give up because you're, you're not gonna feel like you want to, but one day it's all gonna make sense and the actions that you're gonna take, how you are through that process, how is life, how is God gonna trust you with more if you don't have a positive, and a good attitude. And that's hard to do. So you just have to like keep doing it. And remember, there's always, you're gonna learn something. You either let that break you, or you let that make you, or just like, feel good. Thank you. Hi, I just wanted to say first, thank you for sharing your story. I did not know your background, and I just had my third baby in June. Thank you, and I ended up in the hospital for a very long time, which I thought was heart failure. And it was just a lot, I was still going through a lot, but I want to say thank you, one. And two, my question is that I have three small kids at home, and I wanted some tips on how to find a time when there's so many distractions with the little ones. I think um, when my daughters, my other two were younger and even now. So you need to know, okay, this is the time. You have to set the time and the days that you're gonna do it. Cause it's like, you have to set that time aside. Okay, this is our the 20 or the 30 minutes that I'm gonna do. And you do it. Distractions, sadly, when you have little kids, if you can work that time, I don't know if they have their ages, if they have a schedule, which my babies are being terrible for naps, by the way, to, you know, to get that schedule. So if you are a super mom that can manage to have all the kids at the same time to take a nap, even if they're screaming in their room, okay, this 30 minutes and this is your, just deal with it, baby, then you send that time for you. If not, you kind of like have to press for me. You have to embrace the chaos. Like, I used yeah. to fight it and I'm like, right now, even to these days, sometimes I want to do a really good workout, maybe it's over, I'm like, this is how it is, I'm going to make the best of it and it's going to be interrupted but just do it. And they need to know, they're see those families, they're gonna learn. Oh, this is mommy, she's exercising. So they're, little by little, they're gonna, they're gonna leave you alone. They're gonna start. So just commit to it and make it sustainable. But if you can, if you have help, like family close to you. I do have my husband during the day because he works at night. Okay, so, so when you have your husband, say, honey, these 30 minutes, the kids are freaking yours. You better deal with them. You better deal with them. Let me do it. Because that's good. That's a good thing. You can do it alone, but it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be interrupted. But you do it. Thank you. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Sarah. This is Emily. She want to come up here. Um, I'm a very pessimistic person, so I have trouble keeping my energy and like motivation to want to exercise. So like, what are tips to like want to keep doing? Yeah, first, if you're pessimistic that like you said, yeah, stop saying that <laughs> because that's, we are what we say and what we believe about ourselves. Amen. So you yeah. need to stop. And I'm, I, I've been in your position. I'm not going to tell you it is. It is like everything in life. It's work. You can start um, writing. So whatever you feel, my, I have a really close family member who's going through something, and I'm like, whenever you hear those thoughts and whatever, write the opposite, say it aloud. So you need to kind of like change the wire, whatever's going on in your brain, because sadly, 
what you think you are, what you is how you're gonna act. So start with affirmations. Do start praying about it, and, and and just stop saying things like that, and, and surround yourself with more positive pos positivity, and and the things that you want to do, start saying, I can do this. I am gonna change my perspective, and start finding gratitude. That is. Everybody says that, but very few people do it. If it's something, even with nutrition, a lot of people are emotional eaters, right? How many of you? The simple act, before you start, take a deep breath and just think about, wow, something that you're really grateful about your body, about the place, or thinking about the people. I go there all the time. I allow my mind to go, all these people that have no food and we have abundance. Start like finding gratitude in little things so that you can kind of start changing that mindset. But honestly, that is something, um, I used to do a lot of guided meditations, affirmations. To this day, when I exercise, I listen to podcasts, and I personally, and I'm not afraid, I'm not ashamed of my faith, I listen to predicate to, <coughs> Yes, because sometimes I listen to music, but I feel like sometimes the words and the things that you, and for me, when I exercise, it's kind of like, I see it like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm being better, I'm working on myself. Let me take this opportunity to also work on my mind and in my spirit. So that's something that helps me. If you wanna try it. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I have two questions. Um, one of them is about nutrition um, and the other one is about exercise. Okay. I have a, a back injury that kind of stops me to do the core exercises, what would you recommend on, what exercise would be good for someone that has a back injury? So, if you have a back injury, no crunches, you yeah. cannot do anything. But, yeah, planks, glute bridges, um, plant shield, you need to strengthen your glutes. You need to work on your hip mobility because your hip is connected with your back. So that one back. Your hip flexors. Out. So I've been doing my program. I always do a lot of half kneeling movements. Just you have to work on your mobility and okay. your flexibility in your hip flexors because that's connected to your lower back. You need to strengthen your glutes. You need to strengthen your core. The most important thing is you need to, I don't know if you have someone who's really like good at fitness, that's really good with form. Because if you do plants, if you, if, do you have, um, hopefully you have health insurance, I go to a physical therapist. I did and everything. Okay. And, but did they teach you the exercises, how to properly activate your core and how to do the plants? So that's the most important thing because a lot of people do these plants and exercise and you're not doing correctly. So you're actually not strengthening or activating and you're not strengthening your back. But for now, start, uh, you can Google, go to YouTube, um, exercises for hip mobility, okay. stretches, exercises to release your glutes, like stretches that will help, gonna help you because this, if you're back, this is gonna be tight and you're gonna feel it. And yeah. exercises to strengthen your glutes and your core. But just the plants are the best, bird dogs, dead bugs, uh, clam shells. I, I'm not familiar with the name. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. I'm like, I do this all the time. It's okay, it's you great. Show us. You know what? I, I, I have you do? so many of those okay, things. You have the but you guys have to, if you don't read, because I write a lot, if you don't read, you're not gonna know what they are. And I do take the time, oh, this is for this, this is for that. And even the ones that I share for postpartum, I'm using like uh -huh. a little corvo, those are so good. Okay, thank you. And the next one was, um, what do you recommend for snacks? Uh, not, not snacks, but um, for people, for me, that have cravings at night, and I choose, chocolate instead of the vegetables. What do you recommend okay. on the nutrition part? What kind of Some days it's okay to have the chocolate. It's actually good for you. I forget a month. But most of the time, right? <laughs> Thank you. I don't feel but we need to learn how to differentiate, which is a hard, uh -huh. uh, from emotional hunger and physical hunger. And there's certain things, and I'm gonna be, I'm actually gonna do a blog on my website about that okay. by next week. Um, so, one of the things, there's a lot of things that you can do. You can have a tea. You can do something crunchy, like carrot, just something because most of the time it's anxiety. Um, drink water, brush your teeth. 
I've been doing that. You do it all the same. Nine o'clock, right on the dot, so that so I can start. So if you're still like hunger after you do all those things, mm -hmm. and after your shows for like, uh, I don't know, half like peanut <coughs> butter, but without, without the sugar, without these things, that's a healthy fat. It has some protein, and every time you you, and if you're gonna have like an apple or a little bit of banana, is you have to put it with a healthy fat. If not. How many of you just eat a banana or, or apple as a snack and then you just feel more hunger like an hour later? So you need that combination, like food combining is really good. And so right okay. now I would say like just eat a little bit, half, start with half of, of an apple with one spoon of peanut butter. All right, thank yeah. you. Or, or oh. frozen vegetables. If you're anxious, I mean frozen fruits. I like frozen mangoes and frozen pineapples. You can kind of like play with it around that. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> There was actually one question I think is so important. Okay. And so I want to, can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, there was this young lady who asked me about, yes, Ben Akan. Ben And who was, when I, who was up here before? The last, the Jessica. Jessica, where are you? Where is she? Hi. No, not Jessica. The one that was just asking the question. Jessica yeah, oh, yeah. Are you married? I am. Good. Get busy with your husband and you won't get hungry. Okay. <laughs> yourself, how you talk about older women, that's what they're trying to do. So if your daughter see you doing a lot of emotional eating, if your daughter see you not saying beautiful things about your body, not appreciated, and I grew up like that, I never heard any woman saying, wow, I'm beautiful, I, she looks amazing, and we're always critiquing her body. So that, that is one of the most important things that you need to be mindful as a girl, mom, um, and even if you don't feel like it, I hope that if she's hearing me, she should start saying beautiful things about her current body right now. Because when we start making changes, <coughs> and it's really hard with little girls because they're very vulnerable, kids are very mean, um, it's gonna be a process and it cannot be trusted. So it has to be fun, the fitness. They need to tell them all the benefits. My 13 year old girl, she is a typical couch potato. So. For her, she also has some problems with like her period. She can get it twice, three times a month. So I am not gonna put her in birth control like some doctors have. So she, I've noticed she has a very, I educate her a lot. And she's noticed how when she exercises three times a week, I do strength training with her 20 minutes. And when she eats healthier, her period is perfect. And she noticed when she's not taking care. So just ways when it comes to education and self-love, and that would be the best approach but it's gonna start with her. If her daughter see her, and removing the dieting mentality, and oh, I cannot eat this, this is bad, this is good, because we don't want, we cannot learn to have a good relationship with food and create good habits if every time you're looking at food, this is bad, this is gonna make me fat, this is good. No, you need to come from education, from nourishing, and, and, and just knowing that it's okay, that it's not gonna be perfect where you're at it. So, if I was her mom, just start with this simple habit. Make sure that she starts drinking at least two more glasses of water every day, and that she has one cup of veggie in every plate. It's all about the adding, all about adding little things. Let's go, let's do, let's do this, let's walk around, um, talk, make it fun, let's do this, invite her in, but not just because of the weight. 
because she already knows, she already feels that way. We wanted her to connect and to see movement as something so much more than to lose. Like, and that is it's really tricky, but it's all about the adding and, and for her to know that she should feel, and I know a lot of women hear that and they feel like, no, it's not true, I hate my body now, I'm not gonna be happy. If you don't appreciate the body that you have now, if you don't love it, if you don't learn to be grateful, even if however it looks, how are you gonna do that that is lasting, that is real, that is genuine, and that even when you lose 50 pounds, you can actually look in the mirror and say, yes, I love myself. It starts now, and I think her mom needs to be aware of how she interacts with food, her approach she takes, and the way she uses fitness, and the way she talks about herself. If I was her mom, I would be like, just, just because she's gonna be here, and like, oh, wow, thank you, God, I love my body. You know, I'm so grateful that I get to move today. Let's do an exercise. This is gonna help us feel energized. Little Ooh. things like that. All right, did you guys find this session helpful? Yes. yes. Are you maybe more equipped with able to go out and help, not just your clients, but how about your family, how about your friends, um, with their health and nutrition? Um, so what we're gonna do next is I'm going to, okay. I'm also the AV person today, so bear with me. My brother, who's usually here, had the nerve to go to work. <laughs> Like, do seriously? Um, <laughs> let me just open up this. Thank you. Do me a favor. Can you turn yeah, on? You did. Thank you. I'm gonna keep it real. I'm not good with this stuff. Just give me a mic on. I'm fine. <laughs> it's coming up. Um, my how did it move? Right? <coughs> That's weird. Oh. Oh, okay, awesome. All right, so I want to bring up um, my co-host, this Lainey Pichardo. Come up, join me. Lainey has been a coach since 2012. She is a one-star diamond coach. And she's also getting ready to attend the New Leader Conference in February, so congratulations. Um, uh, I, know, I know a lot of you here, but what I failed to ask in the beginning, how many non-coaches are in the room? Non-coaches. Okay, so there's a couple of you that I don't know. So um, let me just formally introduce myself. Um, this lady's gonna be sharing her story later on in, in a bit, so I'm just gonna take three minutes of your time. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Nikki Fernandez. Um, I've been a Beachbody coach since October 2009, so I celebrated a decade. Woo! Yay! I've been doing it in 10 years. Um, and I, I, I initially joined um, because I saw my brother's results. Um, my brother had completed P90X, he dropped 60 pounds, and I said, okay, so this stuff works. Right? When you see your loved ones go through a transformation, and especially my brother, who's a very shy kid. Um, I call him a kid, although he's almost 50. Um, but, but to see my, bro my own brother not just go through a physical transformation, but the fact that he was actually a little bit more outgoing, so something was happening in the inside. So that's where transformation first starts. It starts first in the inside, and then it'll, it'll show in other areas of your life. So I decided to say, yes, I'm going to do this. And I put a hold on my gym membership because I was a gym rat for many years. Um, and I put a hold on it because I still started a little bit, not 100%, until I did my first pull-up. And I'm like, oh my goodness, wow. this still works. I love it. Um, and the fact that, you know, I'm on a hashtag keep it real because um, being a body coach for 10 years, full-time for eight, actually going on nine years. Nine years? No, eight years. I'm going on full-time for eight years. I was a former banker for 27 years. I was vice president for Citibank. I worked for them, like I said, 27 years. Um, I had a six-figure salary. I had all my bells and whistles covered as far as insurance and all kinds of benefits, but I was miserable. I was miserable, and although I was a banker, helping other people with their finances, I couldn't help myself. Okay, and so 
I even have a pot to piss on, and yet I was paying $160 at the gym. But I just put it on my credit card. So I did not manage my money properly. And I know a lot of you in here can say, yo, I know exactly what you're talking about, girlfriend, because that's me. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm sharing it. So I started my beach body business on the side. It was, it, was, it was a side gig for me, because I was still in my corporate job, not happy. Um, I, can, I can do a whole presentation just on that. But I started falling in love with helping other people. Helping other people see results. Now I no longer wanted to go to my job, I just wanted to be on Facebook. <laughs> okay, inviting people, <laughs> um, you know, helping my clients get results. So eight years ago, um, I, was, I made the decision by slowly, because I was treating it like a business, you know, and I know a lot of you here are coaches, but you're still a hobby coach. In other words, you know, you're doing this because for your own health and fitness. And that's why I initially did it at first, right? Um, I, I was doing it for me. I had no intention of helping anyone else until I started sharing results. I started sharing what this was doing for me. And before you knew it, I had a team. And before you knew it, I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I can pay my car payment now. Like all of a sudden I was making this extra cash. And for the record, Beachbody does not guarantee any level of success. Mm -hmm. um, every individual's coach success is based upon their hard work, mm -hmm. right? So it's what you it's what you put out there, what you what you get. It's almost like what you eat, right? So if you if you eat junk, you get junk results. If you eat healthy, you're going to get healthy results. It's the same thing. What you put in is what you get. Um, so I was able to triple my salary from Citibank. And I told you I had a six-figure salary, so thank you, God. Thank you, Beachbody, for this amazing opportunity where I've been able to triple my salary. Uh, but more than anything else is I have, I have time freedom, because you can't put a price on time freedom. And so I've been able to take care of, a lot of you know who my mom, Mama Dukes, and I've been able to take care of my mom, which is a huge, I can't even put a price on that right now. Um, I've been able to you know, go on vacation, not have to worry about put, putting things on credit card because I made a decision, like Idadi just said, I forget who asked the question, um, but she says, you just gotta make a decision. That's all it is. Life is a decision. You either want it or you don't, but there's no in between. And so in this business, you can't be Humpty Dumpty. Mm -hmm. You know who Humpty Dumpty is? <laughs> Do you wanna know why he fell off the wall? Because he couldn't make up his damn mind which side of the wall he wanted to be on, so he cracked his ass. <laughs> so that's how, I, <laughs> listen, you gotta find humor in things. Um, and so that's, that's, that's my story, and, um, and I'm still not where I, where I wanna be. There's still a lot of work ahead. There's like, ne for next Super Weekend, every chair in here should be filled up. Mm -hmm. We need to be helping more people, because at the end of the day, what we offer, is the perfect solution. And I say that loud and proud. Yeah. The perfect solution. We have the best nutrition plans. We have the best trainers, mm. okay, who come here, you know, and give all the knowledge, give their time to help us out, guys, okay? And it's, it's a business that when you help enough people get what they want, you get what you want. We're in the business of helping other people achieve their goals, and you know what happens? You achieve your goals. That's what happens. So I know I probably went over a minute or three minutes, but that's my story and I'm going to stick to it. And, um, <laughs> and all I know is that 2020, 2020 is going to be an amazing year for every one of us because, hello, 2020, 2020 vision. Right? Mm. Um, so with that, let's, um, let's start our, um, our presentation. So I'm going to turn it over to Dislaney. Um, like I said, Dislaney is going to share her story in a bit, but let's go take it off. Okay, hello everyone. Hello. Yes. 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 Yes.
that. Alright, guys. We're here to celebrate success. Uh, we love celebrating everyone, and not just for the weight loss. So we want to remind you what is our core purpose, which is help people achieve their goals and enjoy a healthy, fulfilling life. So I want you to repeat after me. Help people. Help, help people. people. Achieve their. Achieve, achieve their, their goals. Goals. And enjoy a healthy, fulfilling life. And, and enjoy, enjoy a healthy, fulfilling life. life. You guys are like the <laughs> Come on, now. Let's, let's do this together. I'm kind of blind. Come on, 2020 vision. No, uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't explored all my talents yet. Hey, long the time. Oh, yeah. You ready, guys? Help people. Help people. Achieve their goals. Achieve their goals. And enjoy a healthy, fulfilling life. And enjoy a healthy, fulfilling life. Now we're talking. Yeah. Does anyone in here has submitted their progress to the Beach Body Challenge? Only one to. person? You have to yes. do it every so month. You have to make sure that you send your progress every single month in order to get monthly prizes every quarter, yearly. The Ching Chan, you know that for your progress? You have to make sure that you do it every single month. Mom. Did you no, say the Ching Chang? Yes. Huh? Oh, Ching Chang. Yeah. Oh, it's money. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Has anyone here won the Beach Body Challenge? Anyone in here? No, not yet. Okay. So you have to make sure that you send it every single month. So let's go into it. I like what you what said. What about the shirt? I like it. Well, hold on one second. I like what you said. Not yet. Because we're in a new year. Hello. Yes. And so what does that mean? That means that a lot of you have already started a new program or you're in the midst of yes. finishing up a program. You don't even put in your results, people, because then you get the free t-shirt. Yes. Who doesn't like free swag? Yes. I like anything that's free, put my name on it. Yes. Right? What else? There's cash prices. Yes, monthly, every quarter, yearly. Hello, like you guys, somebody out here could be the $100,000 winner. Yes. Yes. Like, you know, I think that what happens is sometimes it's I think people see that stuff like, oh yeah, that can happen to them and not to me, right? Yes. No, we all qualify for it. So, pongan de la pila. For those that don't speak Spanish, that means put on your batteries. Okay, is anyone, please stand up if you are currently a success starter, which means that you have cheap, you have helped three people in the first three months as a coach. Yay! Four star diamond coach. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, 
please stand up if you finish as a 2020 team builder or 2020 team leader. Okay, so the next one is for me. I think we have a premier coach in the audience. Yes, yes. yes. So, so. yes. a new coach and she accomplished this goal. Incredible. Incredible job. I want to say, where is Steven? Okay, so let me just say something about Rosie, okay? Um, Rosie is in our team and, uh, and I'll say it in Spanish. Who only speaks Spanish here? Okay, so I'll say something really quickly in Spanish but they didn't get them. Oh, I can say it in Spanish. <laughs> That's my other language. Um, anyhow, so Rosie, you've been a coach for a year and like what are you? Today. Exactly a year. Wow. And you are a premier coach. Amazing. Woo! Woo! So I, I have to tell you when I first I, I first met Rosie and in speaking with her, the things that she was doing. She was just doing it. I'm like, she's not even overthinking it. Like, you just did it. And I think that's what happens to a lot of us in general. I was in 98% of the population, is that we overthink things. Like, oh my God, I'm too scared to do this. I'm too scared to do that. And there's no future in fear. That's my hashtag. Hashtag no future in fear. There really isn't, because fear just stops you. And so you punched, well, I don't think you even know what fear means. Tu conoces esa palabra, no te tengas miedo. Miedo significa, déjame explicar. I'm not saying that what fear is, explain it, she doesn't know what it is. But I know in a, in a little bit, Carlos, um, who's our um, director of um, Hispanic Market, is going to be interviewing Rosie. So I'm not going to take away, I don't want to take your shine away, Carlos. So we're going to bring you back up in a little bit, okay? Muchas gracias. Woo! Twenty twenty eight coaches. Not yet, but coming who? up. Coming exactly. up. How about this? Lining up, yes. Who's lining up to be a twenty twenty one elite coach? Come on, stand up, don't stand up. Steven, Steven, take a picture. Take a picture. Come on, guys, come on. And take a picture. Come on, get in. Okay. Woo. Thank you. I like that. Now I have you got proof. A picture. I got proof. I got proof. <laughs> a stand up if you have completed a workout program and nutrition program from start to finish. Yeah. 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 That's everybody. Look at that. What happens when you're in a fitness work, industry? A lot of dedication, a lot of focus, and like um, that is to say, you know, not every day is pretty, but we make it happen. Please stand up if Beach Body has changed your life in any way of weight loss. So before Beachbody, um, I started Beachbody when I was like pretty young. Not that I'm saying that I'm old, but you know, I was living the crazy life, drinking every weekend, partying. I used to eat twice a day outside because I didn't know how to cook. I learned how to cook with Beachbody. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was everything that I earned. I used to work as, as a part-time um, cashier in Fairway supermarket. So everything that I earned it was to eat outside, drink every weekend. I had no goals. I was just living the day-to-day -day life. And I found my coach in Facebook in a boutique group. She hit me up, oh, I have this group sign. Like, who is this loca? <laughs> 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 
And she messaged me because I, I bought diet pills. And she saw, when I got the diet pills, I wrote to the lady, oh, I got my diet pills, I'm gonna sign on Monday. Because you know, we always sign on Monday. So, <laughs> so after I, said, I published that post, she sent me that message. And I'm like, who is this woman? So I told her, no, I'm not interested. You know, I just bought, I just bought these diet pills. So I'm gonna try them. And I tried them for a week. The lady told me, oh, you can eat everything you want. <laughs> two pills a day. But during that week, something light up, like, what am I doing? Like, I'm not learning anything. She's not guiding me in anything. Oh, and I forgot to say, I paid two years of gym membership, and I would go eat every machine, and I would go home, eat a plate of uh, white rice with egg, which is my favorite food, and wonder, <laughs> why am I not getting results? Like, I'm not seeing no muscle gains. Like, nothing is happening here. So, um, that was me. And I stopped the diet pills and I reached back to her. She told me, oh, this is how it works. Again, because I, I, didn't, I didn't read. You know, some of us don't read. But um, I reached out back to her again and I asked her, tell me, ¿cómo que funciona esa vaina? El reto, eso. Because I used to see, like, uh, you know what we do? We share proudly our transformation and the transformation of our, of our team and all of that. And I would see her um, posting and sharing. I'm like, oh. She had a team, you know, I want to be part of that. So she, she told me again how it works. I didn't have the money um, because, you know, I was throwing money away on food and all of that. So I saved for like three weeks or a month. I saved my money. I started with P90X. I did 60 days and that changed my life. And ever since, I haven't looked back. And how Beachbody has changed my life, I mean, I don't know, but this woman that you see here is not a woman that signed up in 2012. I was very shy, very insecure, and even though I'm nervous right now, but I would not be able to do, to do this. And it has, after, because I'm a mom, after my pregnancy, I have lost 40 pounds. Woo! Oh, you know, working out from my kitchen, following our nutrition programs, but what I, I am most proud of myself is my mentality. I used to be the victim, um, play the victim, complain and all of that, and now it's like this lane, you gotta do it or you gotta do it. Because that's what I want. I don't settle for less, and that's how it has changed with my mentality, which I love the most because, uh, like I always say, if you don't work on your mentality, you're not going anywhere, you know? You can be the fittest girl or guy out there, but if your mentality is not working, you're not going in. That's what I, what I feel. Um, I started helping others when I did 60 days of being I yet. I never posted outside um, on Facebook, but when I put my pictures side to side, and I was like, wow, that is me. We fear, we had a lot of fear. I posted my transformation picture and I logged off of Facebook because I was very scared of what people were gonna say. So the next day I come up and that picture like was blown away. This lady, what are you doing? Tell me what I do. And I reached out to Sari Saudi, que le digo? What do I say to them? And then that's how I started coaching. And in January 2013, I said, I'm going all in. And I did my vision board. And 90% of those goals that I, that I set on, in 2013 um, came true because I started coaching, working on myself mentally, physically, and emotionally. Um, Beachbody has been a blessing for me. I come from, I started transitioning from um, the supermarket to banking, to Chase. And uh, Chase where, you know, you punch in, but you don't have no time to punch out. Yes, so he can, I can relate to that. It was, the you know. Monsters. Yes. <laughs> yes, so that was me. And when I was able to double my income with my, working my beach body business um, part-time, um, after I got home from Chase, I would do my workout, help my mom with the dishes, um, have dinner, and then work my business one, or two, one to two hours. Um, and then I was able to double my income and I believe it was like a year later or one and a half, I quit Chase. Um, but apart from the financial side, after, thank you, after becoming a mom, it has helped me with the financial freedom. Now I have a boy, I grew up without my parents. So having the financial freedom and you know, being 
100% present for him has been the huge, the hugest blessing uh, for me. You know, when he said, whenever he needs me there, I am there. I don't have to, to ask for a time off, call out, or anything. And that for me is like everything. So, like I said, this opportunity has changed my life in so many ways, and I am forever grateful for my coach for oh, always. You you know, being there and setting the example and for the opportunity as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your slides are in all the way. Where are you going? Oh. <laughs> She's so nervous. She, she wants to nervous. leave. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna celebrate the 2020 Elite 10. Woo! And they are... Holly, Moira. Holly. Okay, so we have Holly uh, Hiller. 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 Holly Hiller. Okay. Moira Kuba Kukaba, Melanie Metro, Emily Fogger, Melissa McAllister, Amy Silverman, Mandy Kelly, Jess Dukes, and Kelsey Hill. So congratulations Yay. to the top. Woo. 2020 top coach, ringing in again, Ashley Ballstad. All right, now you may have a seat, and now we're gonna go watch the video. We're not gonna go. You're gonna sit there and watch the video. So, Marlon. <laughs> <laughs>